everyone and welcome to the sustainable development e talk series co-hosted by cns and indian institute of management that is iim indore uh, just uh, a few maybe half an hour or an hour ago we heard parliamentarians and mayors and governors speak about the impact of tobacco and what how it is um, uh, impacting covid 19 now we have with us today in this sdg talks two renowned medical doctors who are specialists in critical care internal medicine and emergency medicine and they are none other than dr mayank somani and dr ajay kumar they will share their insights on the connect between tobacco use and public health good afternoon everyone hope you are all safe and doing well on behalf of the indian institute of management indore I wish all the panelists for today's talk a very warm welcome. We are grateful to have you on this platform here and are looking forward to your enriching talk. Over to you. Okay, welcome Dr. Somani and, and Dr. Thank you. Kumar. Uh how does tobacco use impact our health? Uh as medical professionals, what do you have to say to that? See <clears throat> it's 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 a very well known fact that uh, tobacco use per se is not good except for recreational use and a certain high which people get out of tobacco use um, and those who are consuming it also know that um, eventually it's going to harm the body how is something which uh, you know most people know as well but i'll just quickly enumerate it the list is endless you know from top to bottom from head to toe everything can be affected but largely what all it can do are then especially the non communicable diseases one of the leading ones is going to be the cancer and very you know very naturally anybody can understand that it is a lung cancer which we are talking about for to begin with and a lot of people have this misconception that lung cancer is the only cancer which can happen because of tobacco or smoking however let me tell you that that's a big myth and most of the cancers which you might have heard of anywhere in the body are affected by smoking or increased by smoking like you know even for that matter uh, oral cancers stomach cancers pancreatic cancers and both in male as well as female so cancer as a whole you know most cancers are caused uh, by smoking and tobacco thereafter comes the next big uh, problem which is cardiovascular diseases which encompasses both the heart as well as the brain heart where we have heart attacks and various other problems related to that and eventually a heart failure and with respect to the cerebrovascular where cerebro means brain where we we find that there are instances of stroke and other vascular diseases in the brain which can happen because of the smoking and tobacco usage then there are peripheral vascular diseases where your uh, arteries and supply of blood to the your limbs can also be affected and one of the very common uh, name which comes as burger disease where gangrene can happen because of smoking in your limbs and fingers and toes and where you have to cut your limb just to save the patient then uh, you know these are things which uh, then there is diabetes and hypertension both raise in bp and raise in blood sugar which is also contributed by smoking and tobacco then there are miscarriages pregnancy problems childhood asthma problems these are there and to top it off i know to to understand that your lungs become weak and they are called as chronic uh, obstructive lung diseases where there is difficulty in breathing so these are some of the things which one should know that once you start consuming tobacco in any form smoking or non smoking forms there are so many diseases which can afflict a person and eventually the quality of life can become really 
difficult uh, to uh, have a good quality of life. Are chewing tobacco and other forms of tobacco less harmful than cigarettes? No, not really. Um, uh, any form of tobacco, one form sometimes is responsible for a certain type of cancer more than the other. That's a data point. But if you ask me holistically that should, should I replace this tobacco to that tobacco is not going to change anything much. You know, uh, say if you start chewing tobacco, you from a data point of view, you may have lesser lung cancer, but maybe increased oral cancer. But that's just a data point. Something can increase a little bit here, 10% here, 10% there, but both of them are going to be notorious whether you smoke it or whether you chew it or various other forms as well. Okay, uh, Dr. Ajay, uh, can you tell us something about passive smoking? What does actually passive smoking mean and what are its effects? Well, passive smoking or uh, secondhand smoking, this is uh, referred to a condition where the, uh, the a non-smoker person smokes the smoke created by a smoker. So, uh, the smoke created by a smoker can go up to maybe 20 feet or and can remain suspended in the air uh, for many hours. And the smoke which one inhales through passive smoking is as dangerous as uh, uh, the first hand smoke. And uh, it leads to the same kind of a problem uh, as Dr. Samanik uh, told us right now, but all kinds of cancers heart diseases, strokes, all of them are immensely increased by passive smoking as well. And there is a component of uh, what we call a third hand smoke also, mm -hmm. which is uh, sort of, you know, uh, taking up uh, the particles which uh, do not remain suspended, but then just, you know, lie down on surfaces and then while touching them or moving them, uh, they again become suspended in the air and then we again inhale them. So passive smoking is uh, no better than uh, first hand smoking. It's as uh, dangerous as that. Okay, and now uh, since uh, uh, today our audience are mostly youngsters, I'm just requesting the audience to uh, please uh, keep on uh, typing in your questions in the chat box or raise your virtual hand. Uh, and any misconceptions or any doubts you must be having about smoking and tobacco use. Uh, some of you must, may be smokers. I hope not, but so I'm just saying as uh, the discussion and conversation progresses, uh, please type in your questions. Uh, uh, back to our specialist uh, speakers. Uh, what is the overall disease burden due to tobacco use and how does it affect humanity globally? It is in a single world, I will respond, humongous. The burden is humongous. And by 030, it is expected that about, I know, 1 billion people out of the entire population of the world might be affected in one way or the other, along with mortality, to, uh, uh, because of the smoking and tobacco. So... And this is the direct uh, involvement of tobacco and smoking. There are various indirect ways in which uh, it affects, which may not be, you know, there's a tangible way of collecting data and there's an intangible way. So this is direct affliction because of tobacco, which, so it's, 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 gonna, it's one of the leading public health problems. Uh, okay. Uh what do you think needs to be done more given uh, uh, this sort of a dismal scenario and what tobacco use is doing to our health what needs to be done more for tobacco control at uh, the government level community level society level as a doctor what would you recommend well uh, see the uh a burden as smoking and related illnesses 
can only be taken off by a multi-pronged effort by everyone. Uh, it's not only the problem of the person who is smoking, but then it's, it's a problem of everyone. So as you rightly said, uh, it uh, needs and it entails a humongous effort from each and everyone actually. Uh, from the government perspective, I guess the most important thing and a simple thing is to completely ban any kind of a tobacco, not only smoking, but any kind of a tobacco use. Uh, there can be various uh, uh, reasons put forth by various governments not to ban it, but then uh, the single point is to completely ban it, which may or may not uh, be possible in a very short duration of time, but then that's one thing. Short of that, uh, the second best option is to e is, is to implement very strongly the ban on public smoking so that at least secondhand and third hand smoking can be prevented. From the government perspective, what else can be done is to somehow increase the cost of all kinds of tobacco products, limit their sale if they are not able to completely ban, or then limit their sales from certain points which can be checked. Currently, tobacco is available everywhere, every nook and corner of the street, you can get tobacco. Sales should be limited to adults, obviously. Uh, obviously, these are not the best things, but then whatever second best is, uh, can be done is this. From the community perspective, I guess everyone needs to come together, needs to realize that it's a problem uh, of the community rather than an individual. And the community needs to come together to help out that individual, to support that individual in terms of quitting smoking. And the community involves the family also in the same way. Um, as we do so in terms of other addictions. As far as uh, individuals are concerned, I guess most of those people who smoke uh, do try to quit smoking many times, a uh, number of times, and they fail. They fail because most of the times they try to quit smoking without taking professional help. Quitting smoking actually involves uh, multiple efforts from a specialist, along with the community support, the family support, obviously. So if we take uh, professional help, uh, that help actually increases the chances of quitting smoking by more than 50%. Uh, there are certain counseling sessions, there are certain medications available, which actually uh, help in quitting smoking much more. So I guess everybody needs to come together, everybody needs to help all the individuals in you know, getting rid of uh, this level, actually. Okay, uh, thank you. Dr. Somani, would you like to add something to that? And uh, Dr. Kumar, you actually stole my next question from me because, uh, and we'll come back to it about how to quit smoking. Uh, but before that, uh, Dr. Somani, would you like to add something? What needs to be done more at, uh, as a medical professional, what would you advise needs to be done more? Yeah, Ajay has spoken so well. So I was just wondering, Shobhaji, that, uh, you know, among the audience, if there are some questions which can be addressed directly to us, yes, uh, we could take those questions and make it a little more interactive. Otherwise, you know, the theory and uh, these... Uh, uh, literature is already available across all the, you know, in today's times. So, uh, let me give an opportunity to our audience. Yeah, yes, yes. We have a lot of questions. Actually, we are typing in the questions and sending to us because many of them have very weak internet connections right now. So, maybe they are not able to ask uh, uh, orally, but we have the questions. So, I will be asking those questions. They have already typed in the questions and sent, sent it to us. So we have a lot many questions. And uh, one question is that uh, from what we experience in our family too, especially seniors who justify use of hookah as less harmful, 
and mm -hmm. uh, now a days hookah and shisha smoking is becoming very popular amongst the youth uh, what do you have to say to that yes you know as mentioned initially in uh, my initial conversation only that any form of tobacco or even non tobacco uh, uh, vaping so hookah is a, prim a primitive form or you know the more the, the uh, you know modern way of doing the old form of hookah the vaping and um, so these are as uh, harmful as uh, uh, tobacco maybe a little lesser because the number of chemicals which are harmful chemicals are can be lesser and there are a lot of herbal hookahs and everything which has come up but largely they are all uh, harmful to the lungs and recently india banned the e cigarettes the reason was that it was very frequently causing an acute lung injury which is which which can be fatal and there were a lot of uh, incidents and uh, patients of acute lung injury which were coming to various hospitals and eventually e cigarettes had to be banned so the hookah or other forms of uh, tobacco which are considered to be less harmful is again a data point because if you have your lungs gone weak or you have some infections or you have a stroke or you have a heart attack then you have it it is 100% for you the data can say that 50 out of 100 instead of 60 out of 100 if you took hookah versus direct smoke of a cigarette but for you it is 100% if you are afflicted you are afflicted okay uh, there is a question from nishan uh, singh makkar that is a complete ban on tobacco the right solution in the past we have seen such bans giving rise to cases of smuggling and bootlegging so what do you have to say to that? Dr. Ajay, yeah. would you like to answer? Yes. Yeah, see, uh, if you talk about solutions, uh, complete solutions of problems in this world, I guess there are no perfect solutions, right. but the best possible solutions. So we need to consider what is the best possible solutions. Obviously, uh, it's a human tendency to find out, you know, uh, ways around something uh, which has been bad. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's absolutely right that uh, uh, banning might lead to, you know, smuggling of cigarettes and then again, but then obviously uh, something which is available in an open market obviously has much larger use as compared to something which is not available in an open market. So we're just trying to provide the best possible solution. And currently, that's the best possible solution. If production or banning uh, of uh, production of tobacco, uh, so I, I would just put it this way, if tobacco doesn't exist, who's going to smoke it or chew it or use it in any way? So it's just about that kind of a thought process that uh, that something as harmful as tobacco still exists. Yeah. And if we are not uh, uh, really inclined to stop it in this way, then obviously then there would be other ways where we, about which we already talked about. Yeah. In fact, I agree with you completely, Dr. Rajay. And also, having laws i think we have some very good laws even regarding uh, 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 ban on sale to uh, to youngsters or who are not adults but again implementation is a big problem so but it is important to have the law in the first place i think and um, and then implement it properly uh, there are a lot of questions on about quitting smoking and tobacco that how can one quit are there any medications available uh, for quitting tobacco? Is there any role of counseling in quitting tobacco? Uh, so would you like to answer those questions? So how can one quit and uh, does it need to be under medical supervision? See, um, there are various approaches to uh, quitting tobacco and you know people have 5A's approach and 6F approach and various things. However, I will just summarize it in a very you know, succinct fashion that 
a uh, the person who wants to quit it should have you know that kind of mindset that yes i i would like to quit the first thing has to happen from that person and then there are loads and loads of support available you know you could go to a addiction center you could go to a, a general nice physician only there are lot of over the counter medications which are available which are nicotine gums nicotine patches which are just over the counter or there are specific medications two or three of them we also prescribe and it has been very effective that you know we can prescribe and it it decreases the urge for nicotine and uh, there are partial receptors of nicotine that that what it means is that the place at which nicotine hits brain is the same the way these drugs also hit and they keep the, those receptors relatively satiated without creating the problem of uh, you know uh, the negative effect of actual nicotine so yes there are uh, there are medications available there are various other uh non uh, prescript prescribed uh, over the counter drugs available counseling has a big role support system has a big role a lot of people have stigma associated with attending a de addiction center or going to a psychiatrist however they are very helpful if you have good sessions with a psychiatrist a behavior medicine specialist it's going to be a boon for those who want to quit okay uh now uh, there is another question from rahul sharma in fact it is related to quitting uh, he says dr saab is it easy to quit tobacco use and uh, as individual efforts did not succeed so far uh, are there is there enough help available in hospitals he is from hyderabad so he wants to know if there would be any help available in hyderabad and uh, are there enough de addiction centers uh, in hospitals or affiliated to hospitals Oh, yes and then uh, you know hyderabad apollo apollo hospital hyderabad and we can arrange for your visit we can arrange for your um, you know you, the help which you need and it can be done we at apollo as a group as so hospitals all across the country and we through, through shobhaji to us then we will be able to help you it's not easy to quit of course it's not easy to quit but um, because then that that wouldn't have been an addiction in the first place it, if there's an addiction it's not easy to quit however if you are inclined to quit yes it can be done without fail don't worry about it it, it can be done uh, there's no uh, no other way that, you know so uh, nishan singh want, uh, question, wants to ask what is your take on cannabis it is a well known fact that cannabis has medicinal properties and has been extensively used in ayurveda and is now being tested in, in allopathy do you think cannabis would be a better alternative to tobacco um, see um as long as cannabis is being used <clears throat> i mean if you are just wanting to replace one addiction with another then we can have uh, multiple questions and we can always add that this this sounds better than the than the other one but having said that you know well uh, uh, just uh, that uh, cannabis has uh, medicinal properties yes in the dosage the right the right uh, Uh, way it is it, it can be there yes so uh, i i don't know where is the question from you want somebody wants to replace tobacco with cannabis because it has been used uh, for some uh, medicinal properties is that you you're wanting to exchange one addiction with another right please so yes no, uh, so that's, that's yeah. really not helpful eventually everything as to uh, medicinal properties are in certain dose in certain forms and that's being used but doesn't translate that cannabis can be uh, a good addiction exactly uh, there's a question from saida deep that uh, as tobacco raises risk of diseases uh, it has also been seen that uh, it has um, resulted in uh, worse outcomes for covid-19 patients so is there a link between covid 19 seriousness and tobacco use and is alcohol also linked 
uh, to the seriousness? See, uh, smoking otherwise also uh, leads to an increase in various infections and that happens because the uh, layer of our lungs gets injured by smoking. So obviously various infections can easily uh, lead to you know, sticking up in lungs and create problems. And in, in, in a very simpler way, it, uh, smoking leads to a decrease in the fighting capacity of the lungs locally per se. Uh, so yes, like any other infection, there are more chances of uh, COVID infections in smokers. As far as alcohol is concerned, alcohol is uh, uh, one addiction which leads to decrease in immunity of the body. So COVID being uh, infection caused by a virus, so like any other viral infection or any other uh, disease, bacterial infections or any other infectious disease, the body immunity going down means the chances of infections are going up. And any kind of an infection with a lowered immunity is obviously more dangerous. So yes, both smoking as well as alcohol, both of them lead to problems, lead to more infections, more severity of illness as far as COVID is concerned. And not only COVID, but all types of infectious diseases. Uh there is a question which asks for what factors trigger the urge to smoke or to chew tobacco? Is it an addiction? Very often people say that uh, we, it de-stresses us, that if I smoke, uh, I get de-stressed. So what truth is there in it? See, there are certain receptors in your brain which are activated by uh, the nicotine per se of tobacco or smoking. And uh, there are certain happiness uh, chemical releases which are there in the brain because of the same. But those are so momentary that uh, we, it, it just gives you one 15 minutes and it's not long lasting. And that's the reason for addiction that you smoke or you chew, there is a certain happiness question. It comes because of a very tiny release of a chemical, neurochemical in the brain. And doesn't stay. And then you feel that I want it again. And that's how it keeps happening. And that's how it happens, addiction, that there is addiction. And that's, that's where we target our medicines as well. And also, if you, look, if you look, the people when they tell that how to quit, one of the key things is to become more active, exercise, and you know have uh, people to talk to, counseling sessions, and they have a very similar effect like nicotine. Uh, on the contrary, if you start exercising well, then you have more release of uh, your happiness neurochemicals than what the entire day of smoking would do. So that's that's the scientific basis of addiction. And uh, the same scientific basis also allows you to leave it. Uh, in your medical profession, uh, uh, do you have you come across patients uh, who are addicted to smoking or chewing tobacco, which has given rise to other health conditions in them? And what is the age group, if, if you have some idea. Is it the youngsters more or the older people more? Uh, yeah, but uh, it's a very important question, but with a uh, very unfortunate answer, I guess. Uh, there are a lot of youngsters uh, whom we get uh, who are into this habit of uh, smoking and use of other tobacco mm -hmm. in various forms. And that's very unfortunate. Obviously, any age group use of such kind of a product is unfortunate, but then for <coughs> uh, youngsters, it's very unfortunate. Now, these days, uh, all kinds of diseases are happening in younger age groups. And, uh, you know, you get heart attacks in very young age groups, you get strokes in young age groups. 
you get various, you get diabetes in younger age groups, all these kind of things. And not only that, uh, cancers also in younger age groups. So all these things are obviously, there may be multiple factors, but then use of tobacco in any form is definitely contributing to that. And in India, another unfortunate thing to be seen in pretty young age group is cancers related with the oral cavity because of that chewing tobacco. And lot and lot of people in younger age groups come with us. It was uh, maybe 20 years back, you would rarely see a youngster of 22, 24 years of age coming with heart attack. And it's pretty common these days. So unfortunately, yes, it's becoming very common in younger age groups, leading to a lot of problems. But then you see all sorts of age groups involved in this. It's not so that a particular age group is much more uh, you know, involved with the tobacco use, but then it is very unfortunate that the younger generation is going more and more into this. Uh, uh, Dr. Ben, would you like to add uh, something to that, Dr. Somani? Or... Uh, okay. Uh, now, again? Yes, yes. Would you like to add something to what Dr. Ajay said? Hello? No, I, there was a voice breaking. Could, could you repeat the question? I'm just saying, would you like to add something to uh, what Dr. Uh, Ajay said? Uh, connection gap, so I, okay. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll ask again. So yeah. we were talking about uh, more youngsters getting a lot many diseases these days and a lot many smokers in them. Yeah. So is it that, because in my personal experience, I have not come across anyone who says, he or she started smoking or using tobacco, say in the age, at the age of 40 or 30 plus or something like that. So probably the habit forms at a much younger age. Usually, mm -hmm. usually it's a teenage mm -hmm. where the habit starts forming because of certain influences from their peer or their parents mm -hmm. and uh, the youngsters, and we are looking at youngsters of 25 years of age coming with an heart attack or a stroke very commonly. I mean, when I was um, in college, I used to have uh, a 40, 50, 60, 70 years old coming with heart attacks. And now I have 20s and 30s. And, and during my time, when about 20 years back, we used to wonder that, you know, even a 40 year was a surprise. Now a 25 year coming with a heart attack doesn't surprise us anymore. And we regularly have such patients. So it's the change. The change has happened in the last 20, 25, two decades, three decades. Uh, what, has, uh, what role does the tobacco industry play in this? Uh, because we find uh, most of the time it is targeting the youngsters with their uh, very misleading advertisements and lifestyle issues. And so what is the role of the tobacco industry and what, how to overcome that? <laughs> See, um, you're talking about the tobacco industry, which is one of the richest industry, and they know how to how to project themselves, how, how to market themselves, and how to make people addicted to it because that's 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 their money making business. And you know, in in the lingo of the youngsters, I would say that uh, the tobacco industry makes younger people feel like dudes and dudettes to you know smoke around. And uh, they start feeling confident, they start feeling happier, they start feeling as if they have control. Unfortunately, in the bargain, they're losing control of their own self. Having said that, uh, tobacco industry, um, I mean, if you want to fight against the tobacco industry, it's the government and the various NGOs and stuff which can fight against it. Otherwise, they make their plans in such a way that they, and it's freely available. So availability and uh, making them feel that they are happier in control and they, they are smarter. They, they, uh, and all the films and everywhere, you know, where there is projection in a certain way, which impresses people. So tobacco industry works in a certain fashion and that's their business. Our business is to make sure that tobacco as a public health problem does not keep escalating. And uh, 
we should all get together and do and i think um ajay has addressed it so well in his uh, initial uh, when when he mentioned how to quit and how to make all the ngos and government work together okay there is a question that uh, are school programs uh, will school programs help and should uh, uh, students and uh, youngsters be involved at an early stage and early age uh, and uh, be exposed to the tactics of the tobacco industry and also to the harm caused by uh, smoking and other forms of tobacco because that is the age where the addiction begins so will they help yes sir yeah uh, yes. definitely i think that's uh, that's one of the uh, key factors in trying to uh, reduce this menace you know catch him as tobacco industry is trying to catch him early the other party the other side uh, should also try to catch him early trying to make them aware of the menace that this tobacco is that's one thing and then trying to incorporate that kind of a sense that this is not a problem of individuals this is a problem of society of mankind as a whole if we catch him early if we try to instill that kind of a sense in them i'm sure will be more successful in actually winning this war against tobacco and many a times it helps you know kids are very persuasive if they get something in their mind they can make their fathers or parents or fathers or mothers or their siblings quit they can do that and uh, that really helps you know okay. uh i'm just asking the participants uh, because as time is short please raise your virtual hand to ask your question or if your internet connection is weak please type in your question in the chat box um, if you have any questions now we have a very interesting question uh which says that are there any harmless tobacco products and is there any safe level of tobacco use that i have so much of it and then it's okay the answer is a big no and we can keep on testing and we can keep explaining them there are herbal tobaccos and various other things and let me just make you understand say and there are various data you know you go to various very very based literature and whether all white papers from 700 to 7000 chemicals are being considered in a tobacco chewing with tobacco smoking herbal products and herbal tobacco and uh, less tobacco and coming through a water coming through a cigar coming through a hookah various 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 forms of various things have been discussed but the bottom line is that there is nothing like a minute or minimum or harmless quantity of tobacco or any tobacco forms so please refrain from uh, any form of less or more or one cigarette or two cigarette or four cigarettes or half, half a cigarette and all of that or that's just one you know snuff of uh, tobacco nothing works in your favor and if you are hell bent on uh, picking up a um, addiction only then might as well pick up something which is very useful you know music guitar i don't know there are so many things to so many good things to pick up and get addicted to why somebody is wanting to uh, even think of getting some bit of uh, tobacco one way or the other a harmless uh, quantity or not all right uh, we have students here from uh, uh, management institute we have seen very often that in uh, professional colleges like including medical colleges uh, there are lot of young smokers and in management uh, colleges as well uh, hmm. how to tackle them and how to help them they have to start helping themselves first thing first is they have to come out and say i don't want to i understand that it is not good for my health and see those who are youngsters today in colleges 
they're definitely going to have uh, a significant uh, affliction at a very young age and the quality of life is not going to be very good at you know you're coughing all the time at 35 or a 40 years is not going to be good and the way the world is going uh, it's good to have uh, a good quality of life and good health rather than a cigarette in your hand or a tobacco in your mouth so it depends you know whether you have that kind of introspection whether it's going to really help me you know how does how would uh, a cigarette or a tobacco will eventually help and these are, there are counseling sessions this at this point of time uh, me and dr ajay are not here trying to counsel them we're just wanting to tell them that it's not good you need to quit come come on board and tell us or anybody uh, uh, you know the, in our network that you want to quit it, it can be made easy it's possible to quit and i have lot of patients who have done that today only i had three patients who said uh, the diabetes was controlled he came back he came with 400 sugar and today he came back with 120 and i said what have you done really so his first answer was not that you gave me medicine his first answer was that you gave me a pep talk where i should have quit my cigarette and i did that and that's that's the effect so and i was quite surprised that you know that's such a dramatic effect it was wow that that's great that that's really great and i feel you know a, a little pep talk by the doctor while they are seeing patients like i'm talking from the point of view of common public that patient of of any disease or any illness if they ask about their smoking or tobacco history and if they advise i think that will go a very long way because what comes from the doctor's mouth is like gospel truth for for most of us even now so so what do you have to say to that you and dr rajay we would like your comments on it because anything coming from the doctor would really go a long way rather than from others so do you think doctors should incorporate that in their in their daily practice coming across any any patient and i absolutely agree you know to the point it's not only about um, counseling for putting tobacco it's about any disease process so you you would have heard so many times that uh, from various people that when i go to my doctor i get 70% better because uh, i feel better only after talking to that person so that's the kind of thing that most of us would have already heard about it and there are certain situations which definitely require that kind of a counseling and time from the doctor's mouth itself because doctor's telling and a counselor telling obviously makes a difference uh, family saying something and a doctor saying something obviously makes a difference so yes definitely that's one thing and i believe that most of the doctors uh, do give that much of a time for all those kind of people who uh, want to quit any kind of an addiction that's for sure most of them would be doing that yes 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 dr somani would you like to say something and i would like to say that not yeah. only those who want to quit but anybody who comes to you as a patient if, if while you are asking about the history of the disease or illness if there's one question about do you do you used to back go or do you smoke that's a norm yes. that you always yes. ask about addiction just not about tobacco only mm -hmm. yes tobacco uh, alcohol any other addiction yes. anything else he's addicted to and everything so and see at that point of time yes you know when, when a patient is coming to us he is at at his uh, you know mentally he is little uh, weak and uh, you know worried and i think uh, we as doctors and most doctors do that that you know we take that opportunity that uh, we want him and he wants to get all right so we give him uh, you know the drugs are going to act 50% and your all your addictions if you quit will also act equally so that's the way you get 100% all right and most of them listen and some of them don't 
Chico, yes. Uh, uh, there is a question that uh, as tobacco and alcohol and fast food was almost not available during the lockdown period. Uh, do we expect to see a drop in uh, serious cases uh, or is it too early to see that trend? Of course, one day the alcohol shops were open and there was a lot of ruckus there, but for most of the time it was not available as freely. So do you expect some positive results out of that or? <laughs> See, um, again, it's not, uh, the data is not available because as uh, cigarette and cigar were not available, and, but um, patients were also not traveling to hospitals. So we don't know whether there is an impact or in such a short time, whether there's a complete lockdown, even today we are in lockdown only. So we don't know whether uh, this, uh, there would be an impact in the long term. But yes, it has been known from scientifically that if you quit even for a week's time, you get better. So there's no confusion that the next cigarette which you pick up or the next tobacco chewing which you pick up is not going to be of much help. And it's wiser that, you know, um, it's, uh, it's good that you don't do that. And even in short term, there are benefits. That's already known. Mm. So shouldn't bother about uh, from a data point of view for this lockdown. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm just taking one more question, unless there are more questions coming. And uh, this question again is related to, I think, uh, what uh, Dr. Somani said just now, that what are the long term and short term effects of quitting tobacco? Any immediate to short term effects and what are the long term effects? This is the last question I will take, I think. Yes, any, any of you can answer, Dr. Ajay Kumar or Dr. Somani. The short term and long term effects of quitting. Yeah, so. Um... The short term uh, effects are, uh, you know, uh, the beneficial short term effects are obviously increased lung capacity, increased exercise capacity over up after after quitting, which see the initial period of quitting is a uh, little uh, troublesome because there are some withdrawal effects and people will need support during that time. So if somebody asks me that is there a short term benefit? Short term benefit for better health, yes, but short term, uh, you know, initial short term period, initial period of about a two weeks, three weeks, four weeks can be a little troublesome because of the withdrawal effect and that one has to surpass in order to gain better health. And then the short term after about four to six weeks of uh, the withdrawal and stuff, then you start feeling better. You overall feel a lot better than what you were, both in terms of your exercise capacity, your lung capacity, and various other things, and uh, you know the way you perform. And thereafter, the long-term effects are obviously, you know, they are all well known. You have lesser heart attacks, you have lesser uh, lung problems, you have lesser strokes, and uh, you know you do not affect your children passively by passive smoking. Your 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 wife, your and people are not affected in during their pregnancy. And so many, all the diseases which, which we spoke about, they are all prevented. Okay, I'll take just one more question which has come in that is passive smoking equally harmful? Uh, you, a lot has been, you all have spoken about passive secondhand smoke and third hand smoke. Is it uh, uh, because passive smoking actually affects a person who is a non-smoker? So are the effects as bad as a direct smoking? I think uh, Dr. Ajay has already addressed this. I'll leave it to him to, you know. Okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Uh, yes, Dr. Ajay. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Passive smoking or secondhand smoking is uh, as dangerous as uh, first-hand smoking. Rather, um, a sad thing is that uh, passive smoking mostly affects the family members also. You're talking about your kids, you're talking about your wife, your parents who are non-smokers, obviously apart from so many other people who are not related to you. But then as far as medical aspect is concerned, 
yes, passive smoking is as dangerous as uh, uh, first hand smoking. Okay. So uh, now, before we end, uh, no matter how cliched it may sound, but we want one take home message from uh, both of you, uh, more so uh, because we are coming very close to the World No Tobacco Day, which is uh, on May 31st. So, what is one take home message? Uh, from Dr. Ajay and then doc from Dr. Soman, please. Well, uh, on a serious note, I would say uh, uh, quit smoking and it's easy to quit. No doubt about that. You just need to have that kind of a resolve, take help, and you would be able to quit smoking. No doubt about that. On a lighter note, I would say that the young girls need to tell the young boys that you don't look a dude like a dude or a hung when you hold a cigarette in your fingers. It's an absolute no. So that's on a lighter note, but that's how it is. I think that will work more, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dr. Somani, please. Yeah, so, uh, yes. So, uh, you know, I, instead of uh, one take home, I'll give you three take home. Yeah, please. Quit smoking, quit smoking quit smoking because it just not does just does not harm you but it, it, in a passive way it harms your entire family your entire society and it's not worth it okay okay uh, with this we come to the end of today's discussion today um, in i am indore and cns co-hosted sdg talks we were listening to two renowned medical experts dr mayang somani md and ceo Apollo Medics Super Speciality Hospitals and Chief Consultant Critical Care Emergency Medicine and Internal Medicine and to Dr. Ajay Kumar, Senior Consultant Internal Medicine, Critical Care and Emergency Medicine at Apollo Medics Super Speciality Hospitals. We are very grateful that they came online at very last minute to provide medical and scientific facts on health impact of tobacco right after we had heard we had heard from Nepal health ministers and former health ministers and other MPs from Nepal, Bangladesh, and mayors and governors of many Asia-Pacific nations. Thanks a lot to both of them for finding time. In fact, I think yesterday night was a very tough night for both of them, and they were up all night with emergency duties, but still they made it up, made it, made it today. Uh, we will meet again on Thursday, May 14th at 9.30 a.m., to listen to eminent speakers on gender-based violence. Bye till then and stay safe. Our sincere thanks once again to Dr. Somani and Dr. Kumar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you.